Hello again, Internet. This is Sean with BodlerArtDesign.com, and I'm going to do a video tutorial for you on this really cool foggy, rainy window effect uh, based on a tutorial from uh, Abadizo uh, with a few minor changes that I've made for my personal preferences here. Um, first thing you're going to want to do is find yourself a nice photo. If you have one that's a street with uh, some rain on it, or anything like that, it'll work really well. This is a photo I took in Chinatown in California a few years back with this kind of overcast day that I think works um, pretty fair for this project. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do after you've picked your image is start a new layer and uh, choose a m kind of medium dark gray color and just do a fill. Then we're going to create a new layer and switch this to a white because you're going to want that in a minute. Go to your paintbrush settings and I already have this set up. There's a lot of settings for this. Uh, you're going to want to find a brush uh, hardness all the way down to zero. Turn on the spacing all the way up to maximum. Um, you can set your angle to about 90 and the roundness to around 80%. Uh, maybe even a little bit less if you want some more uh, uh, skinnier raindrops. Uh, in the shape dynamics, turn those on. Turn your jitter all the way up to maximum. Um, I turned the control off because I'm not using my stylus on this tutorial. Um, turn your minimum diameter to zero. Angle jitter to maximum. Uh, I turn the roundness jitter to about 50% and the medium roundness also to about 50%. And make sure you turn on the flip X and flip Y on the jitters. Uh, with the scattering, uh, this is a little bit personal preference on how much you want in there. I'm going to set mine to count two, scatter both axes maximum, and turn the count jitter down to 0% with smoothing turned on. And once you have that, you can just uh, make sure you're on a white brush on your new layer and just add some random splotches to become your raindrops. Once you have that, maybe create a new group and set this to color dodge and just move your rain layer into there. Um, okay, and then what you're gonna wanna do is grab that layer and your gray layer and just merge those into one. Pull up your levels and what you're gonna wanna do is uh, muck with these settings a little bit to basically get rid of all the fuzziness in your drops. Some settings kind of around here work really nice. And hit OK. I'm going to grab our magic wand tool. Um, a nice high tolerance is good for this actually. And select the black. Go up to your drop menu here for select though and also go uh, Select similar, if I can find it. Similar? There we go. And just delete that. Okay. Next thing you're going to want to do, we're just going to hide this layer for the moment, is duplicate this layer. And I'm going to duplicate it twice right off the bat just to get both of these blur layers uh, out of the way. This is going to be my 5% layer. And this is going to be a 20% just to make it easier to identify later on. Go uh, with your 20% layer set, select filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and you guessed it, we're gonna go 20 pixels on this blur. And hit okay. And I'm just gonna do this right now to get it out of the way. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and this one we're only gonna do about five pixels, just so it's just a little bit blurry. Okay, now go back and going back to our 20% or 20 pixels actually, I suppose it's not percent. Um, go uh, double click on that to bring up the blending modes. And the first thing we're going to do is go to our color overlay and pick kind of a, again, kind of a medium to dark gray color. Change that. Um, opacity down to about 
50-60%. This is a little bit personal preference. I actually, depending on how dark your gray is, I'm going to make this gray a little bit less dark. And you could go as high as 60%. Kind of just depends on how foggy you want your window to be. You can always play with that again later. later. Okay. <clears throat> Now what we're going to want to do is turn on our water drops again, and here again, there's a lot of ses settings to be mucked with. Uh, so, uh, first thing you're going to want to do, actually, is turn your fill down to zero so that they become transparent. And again, just double click to bring open the blending modes windows. Uh, first thing we're going to do is an inner shadow, and you're going to want to go uh, to uh, set this as a white color and set this to linear dodge um, turn the opacity down to about 50 percent and set our angle up to a full 90 uh, the distance you might need to play with this a little bit um, I like it around 8 and turn the size up to about seven. Again, it's a little bit personal preference actually. Let's let's keep that down around five and actually I'm gonna bump the distance back down again. Um, and then we're gonna to wanna to change this contour mode to this cone setting. All right, that's just one. <laughs> Next we're gonna to go to bevel and emboss. We're gonna change our depth to about 350%. Uh, change the direction to down. Uh, set the size maybe around seven pixels. Uh, soften up to maybe five or six pixels. Um, and then down in the shading options, you want to make sure you turn off the global setting because we're going to do something a little bit custom on this one. 54 degrees on the angle and about 40 some degrees on the altitude, uh, and then we're going to want to change our gloss contour to this one here, which is uh, Deep Cove, Cove Deep. Um, and then for the highlight mode, we're going to use uh, white here, uh, but we're going to change this to Color Dodge, and turn the, the opacity to about 80 percent and then in the shadow mode uh, we're going to leave that at multiply black but we're going to turn the opacity down to about 50 percent okay next is inner glow for the blending mode uh, we want to set this actually to darken um, and we're going to make that a black instead with about 40 percent on the opacity no noise, of course. Um, we want to make sure our source is the edge. And here we're going to want to turn this uh, up to about 25 here. And next is color overlay. Now here you're going to want to pick kind of a orangey gray color, um, almost a brown tan color, something like that should be okay. Uh, change this to color dodge with only about a 45 40 percent opacity just to kind of give some kind of fogginess I'm actually going to turn that down even a little bit more just to add some fogginess uh, to the inside of the raindrops oh almost forgot a few more settings drop shadow uh, you're going to want to turn on the drop shadow set to multiply uh, with our 90 degree angle, uh, but we're going to turn the opacity way down to about 20 some percent. Make sure your angle's at 90 again. Um, move the distance up a little bit for those drop shadows. Um, turn the spread up just a just a touch, and turn the size up just a touch. Okay. And that should be it for our nice raindrops. And those are starting to look 
look pretty good. Now, what you're going to want to do is make our layer here, layer our 5% layer visible. And because I did these this a little bit out of order from my notes, okay, what we're going to want to do is if you hold the control when you click, you're going to select the pixels for this, uh, for, from your raindrops. And then with the 5% layer highlighted, add a layer mask so that we're hiding everything except for what's underneath the raindrops. Now make sure you have the mask here selected. And then you're going to want to go filter, blur, motion blur. And you're going to want that set directly 90 degrees and with a distance of about 80. You might want to play with this a little bit um, to make sure it looks good with your image resolution and hit OK. And now what I like to do is you can kind of see here um, what I like to do is turn off or unlock this for a little bit and then move just a layer mask up until the blurry part is just barely underneath the pixels. Here, If I hide these it might be a little bit easier to see. Okay, just to make it look a little bit like the drops are falling down and creating a path as they go. Okay. Now, we're like 90% there. This already looks really good with kind of a blurry effect. I'm going to turn this back on. And actually what I'm going to do is now, I'm going to duplicate this layer. But I'm going to then delete the layer mask. And if you wanted to put in some words or draw uh, a nice shape. I'm, but what I'm going to do is actually, I'm just going to make it look like somebody just wiped off the window. Oop, that's way too much. Sorry about that. Having some technical issues. I want a nice big brush, but not quite that big. Good enough. And eh, we'll just do this. Okay. And I'm just going to create a new layer uh, for me to just go like this and kind of make it kind of a random brushy thing here. I'm going to do the same thing I did before where we select and then come back to this layer and turn the mask back on again. Actually, that might look better if we do a harder brush. Let's do that again. Delete the layer mask. I'm just going to grab everything that's in this layer and delete it and grab a harder brush or make my brush harder. Obviously, you can play with that quite a bit uh, to make it look more like that. Uh, let somebody just walked up and wiped off part of the window. Um, like I said, here I kind of did my uh, annoyed robot mascot. You can kind of see. So that's pretty much it. Uh, you can play with that some uh, more. Um, have fun with it. It's a great little tutorial. Uh, thanks, and uh, don't forget to like me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter and I will post some more for you. Have a great time.